Hello there guys and welcome back to episode number 7 of The Hibs Project. As always, thank you very, very much for all the likes and uh, the comments on the previous videos. Thank you to the new subscribers, I really do appreciate it. And since we last met, we fast forwarded a month in the game. We've had some decent results and some not so decent results. We've brought some players in, some players have left and some wizards are back in training. And since we last met then, it was the Betfred Cup final loss to Celtic and the 1-1 draw at home with Motherwell. And I know you can see on your screen, since we've last been together, one, two, three, four, these two don't count, but six draws in total since we last met. One win against Hart, some would say. The most important fixture. We won 3 1 against Hearts, but other than that, St Johnston, Celtic, Livy, and Ross County in the league draws, and uh, two friendlies that we played before we play Cali in the Scottish Cup fourth round today. All draws and some frustrating ones in there. Now, we started with the St Johnston away, in which we were fairly dominant in the game. We had some good chances, got caught on the counter, which is a theme of what I'm about to tell you. Stevie May made it 1-0. They had some really good chances, three clear-cut chances in total, actually, uh, to really like to really punish us, and they, they just didn't take them. Uh, Melker Halberg actually got us back into the game on 53 minutes. We just couldn't find a way through. Two woodwork hits in this game. Again, another theme of what I'm about to show you. We then went away to Celtic and had two incredible chances at the start of the game. Didn't take them. They scored in the 29th and just after halftime through Eldson Edward, who is flying this year. Since they rejected the bid from City earlier on in uh, in the, one of the earlier episodes, uh, he's gone on to score a lot of goals. But we were 2-0 down in this game before Stevie Mallon uh, got us back into the game, I should say, not levelled. Got us back into the game from the penalty spot on 49 minutes. And let me just show you this. Some Saif Edine Kaui in the 95th minute. Now this highlight was properly dragging on towards the end of the game. As you can see here in the top left, 94 minutes and 51 seconds in. And uh, having hit the woodwork again in this game, um, I thought it was just a highlight ticking away to the end of the game. Now we recycle the ball here through Porteous who goes long. to so Munovic heads it down to Joel Newell. Now I'll pause it here. I was thinking that, you know, the game would be finished. Joel Newell lays it off to Kahui, who ends up doing this. Top bins, 20 yards out, to rescue us a point. And it was nothing more than we deserved. But we left it late, 95th minute, we uh, equalised. And I thought, that's a good point. You know, well, we'll take that away at Celtic. We then followed that up with a 3-1 win against Hearts, but it doesn't really tell the whole story. It seems like it would be a comfortable victory. But we were all over them, hit the woodwork, had some really good chances, but it took us to go 1-0 down in the 75th minute against Hearts to then score t three goals in the final 10 minutes. Adam Jackson at the double and a Stevie Mallon penalty, which I thought had won us the game. In, in truth, it did in the 90th minute. Uh, Stevie Mallon stepped up back-to-back -back penalties. Uh, having had the issues I've had in my Twitch streams and uh, the penalties earlier on in this uh, last couple of episodes, I should say, it was a nice it was a nice way to win it, shall we say, with Stevie Mallon scoring from the penalty spot. Uh, Jackson made it 3-1 in the 93rd minute after uh, Keeper made a good save and he tapped in from a corner. We then followed that win at Hearts up with two of the most frustrating draws I've ever had on this year's Football Manager. 0-0 away at Livy, 31 shots, 18 on target. Their keeper made 18 saves. Hit the woodwork once, two clear-cut chances, and we just couldn't score. We just couldn't score. And in some of the other draws that we'd had earlier on in the season, we had plenty of highlights, etc., etc. This one was, uh, excuse me, we had no highlights in the draws earlier on in the season. This one, plenty of highlights. We just couldn't score. Dorridge came off after an hour. McNulty came on, and we just couldn't, we couldn't score. We then go into the county game. Now, I posted a screenshot of this on my Twitter. Link to my Twitter is in the description if you guys haven't seen it. 40 shots on goal we had. County scored a free kick in the 58th minute with their first shot on target and their only shot on target of the game. Now, we took uh, McNulty off on 55 minutes. We then went 1-0 down after 58 minutes with County's first shot on target. We then equalised directly straight away from the kickoff. We went long to Christian Deutsch, who'd only been on the pitch a matter of minutes. 
and that is how it stayed. Now, if you look at the stats, that is a proper FMing, isn't it? That really is. Uh, so some disappointing results in there, and this is what it does to the league table. We slipped to third with both Celtic and Rangers having a game in hand. They are to play each other in the game in hand, so it may still serve as well. But this is the stat here. 21 games played, 11 wins, 9 draws, 1 loss. It's just, I mean, we've only lost once all season and we don't find ourselves, you know, in, in the mix for the title, shall we say. We're 7 off Celtic, 1 point behind Rangers. As I said, Celtic and Rangers, old firm is the game in hand. Um, but what those results made me or led me to do was I went to the board and I asked for more money. I asked for more transfer budget and I asked for more wage budget. I've put most of the transfer budget into the wages so we can bring in some players. Now, one player who will arrive later on in the save, it'll be July by the time this guy gets here. He's confirmed joining Hibs on the 1st of July. It made me buy a striker. That's what it did, basically. Those results where we missed chances, I've decided that we get Camberry back off loan. Whether we move him on or not, get to figure out. But Samuel Longo will, will join us from Venezia. Uh, decent all-round stats, I think, for the SPL. And we got him for £500,000, which I thought was a steal. And uh, it allowed me to put more of the transfer budget into the wage budget so we could bring in Eric Garcia on loan from Man City. We are paying a lot of his wages, but I feel like what he brings us as a centre-back, as sort of a ball-playing defender alongside Jackson, alongside Porto, depending on you know who's suspended or who's missing, whatever it may be, I think we've got an absolute gem here. I tried to put a cheeky uh, future option clause in here for like 5 million, and uh, they changed it to 30 million. So um, yeah, we remove that. We may or may not have him back. I'd love to have him a part of the team because he does go on to be like a very good centre back in the game uh, but for a loan signing until the end of the season I'm very very pleased with him next of all in we brought in Kaelin Hines on loan from Watford again paying because I had to put more money or put more money in the, in the wage budget it allowed us to spend a wee bit more on wages so we're paying his wages again Kaelin Hines on loan from Watford a very very good winger or a striker or a central attacking midfielder I brought him in to basically play back up to any of those three spots now with Horgan being injured he's he's since back from injury um i felt like we needed more depth um in that sort of areas on the wide areas and through the middle so he can play a host of positions which is good for us and i'm pretty pleased actually he's good pace uh, some good mentals in there i'd like his finishing and first touch to be a wee bit higher but in for in terms of the spl again it's, it's, a, it's a decent signing for us the final loan signing that we made was renat Dadasov on loan from wolves paying his wages again and he is basically going to be either a backup or a starter in front of Doidge and mcnally we needed somebody else that could come off the bench hold the ball up for us if we needed to if Doidge was wasn't doing it for us and just something different for us to try and hit or you know to try and make the breakthrough because we just had so many games where we were missing chances I wanted another striker another option to bring off the bench so uh, yeah paying his wages again it's a lot of money now we're spending on wages but I feel like to sort of push us over the line and help push for second and see if we can uh, get into first position or really challenge Celtic for first position. Uh, I feel like he's a good signing for us. One player who did leave us then was Paul McGinn. He went to Millwall. It allowed us to free up some wages and uh, I wasn't really playing him, you know, with Naismith and Davy Gray in there um, at right back. He was kind of like a third string. So uh, yeah, it was good to get him off the wages, uh, off the wage budget, if you will. And uh, yeah, all the best at Millwall. The first player that we welcome back from injury is in fact Daryl Horgan. He had five weeks out with a calf strain um, I think he got injured against Celtic I think it was and uh, he missed that whole month that I've skipped forward but he is now back in training and back for today's game second player to come back or is starting to come back he's just got back into training or light training you should say he's in the rehabilitation phase uh, is Omionga he's been out for a long long time nearly three months in total uh, Omionga comes back with a hip injury some of his physical stats have uh, have dropped but we'll get him back for the end of the season running and then whether we look to secure him full time from Genoa we will see but one player who is back in the rehabilitation phase is my boy Martin Boyle some of his mental excuse me some of his physical stats have been affected um, by the injury but he is back in training light training he's in the rehabilitation phase like I said and uh, he's got about six weeks to go before he's fully fully training not fully fit but fully training so we may see him before the end of the season i'm uh, delighted for him recently signed a new contract with hibs in real life so congrats on that brother much deserved happy to see you staying at hibs getting some football under your belt as we uh, as we look towards the competitions coming up with australia 
uh yeah so congrats on that my friend i'm back in training the star man the person who made me do this hip save or the person i wanted to do this hip save for uh is back in training so hopefully we'll get to see him soon another player real quick that i actually forgot about we got in on a free transfer when horgan first got injured we brought him in was yosan uh we got him elche or elche i think it said is they released him and we picked him up on a free transfer i mean he hasn't really stormed the spl since he came in but he was a good option for us and will remain an option off the bench should we need him uh you know in any injuries in the squad so i feel like now we've made a bit of a we've made some improvements in different spots now the players you can see that we got in from marseille because of the players that we brought in on top of that um their star ratings have gone down you know because they're young young talent but i feel like we've now got more of a squad it is mainly made up of loan signings don't get me wrong but i feel like now with the squad that we've got we've got more in the tank if you will to make some changes not have players fit or, or um tired should we say and have everybody fit to challenge on all fronts because we've still got the scottish cup to go after hopefully we don't mess that up today in our first game uh, on video of the Scottish Cup we have played Cali already this season we played him in the Betfred Cup earlier in the start of the season um, but yeah this is uh, I'm looking forward to this now because we've got more strength and depth like I said and uh, yeah looking forward to next season already and this will be the team that takes on Cali at home today in the Scottish Cup fourth round we bring in Dubrovsky Marciano still struggling with um, with a wrist injury he should be back to full training soon but we go with Dubrovsky in goal the back four of Davy Gray, Jackson, Garcia comes in instead of Porteous, and Cuckoo continues at left back. Halberg and Malin in the middle of the park. Horgan one side, Curtis Jones the other, Kaui in advanced playmaker role behind Christian Deutsch. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to getting back to some sort of normality. Now, there have been a lot of draws so far, and you all saw them at the start of the video, but hopefully there will be no draws today. Now, Easter Road place host to this cup game i'm looking forward to getting underway in the scottish cup uh, it should be quite good hopefully we get another cup run because you do get some money from the cup and it will help us in the long run so here we go underway hibbs versus cali and uh, the first time we get to see eric garcia making his competitive debut for us today we do have players on the bench that we brought in dadasov and heinz are both in there um, so should we need them, we can look for them here. As Cali uh, seems to have the first chance, and Dubrovsky makes a good save. There was no offside there. That's Oh, he was offside in the end. It was called back. But Dubrovsky didn't know that and made a good save. 25 minutes in then, and we haven't seen anything from us. Uh, no chances, really. This is uh, It's been a theme of the draws, was that we were playing well, making chances, but just not taking them. And so far today, we haven't had a chance. But maybe we can have one here. As we build from the back... With Dabrowski who finds Jackson into Halberg in the middle of the park. Now, Kaui is very deep there. I would rather he was up closer to Christian Deutsch. But Malin to Jackson, out to Horgan. It's good to see him back. We have missed him. And I think him in that role, as Halberg goes for a strike and Rogers makes a good save. But having him out on that wing, having a different option to bring off the bench, um, I think it probably cost us in those draws. As we approach half time here, there is a chance for us. Davy Gray now throws it to Malin, gets it back from him, and Malin gets it back again. And Jones goes in. Another assist for Stevie Malin. And Curtis Jones starts us off here, gets the breakthrough. Hibbs 1, Cali 0. We work it quite nicely here. Gray to Malin, to Gray, back to Stevie Malin. And another assist for the Wizard, who in the last episode I said that um, Roy hodgson was after him or was looking at him was at our last game roy hodgson has since been sacked by uh, palace and uh stevie mallon he continues to be our player for now and hopefully we can keep him for a long time so half time then and the stats again it shows with this formation and this sort of style that we're playing we dominate most of the games but today we've taken our chance and we lead one nil now i'm gonna say we've got a guard against complacency because um yeah things can change if you let your performances dip they seem happy with that and we'll get underway then. Uh, like I said before, Horgan just back from injury. So his condition is not great. We will look to change him. We'll probably bring on Hines, our new player from uh, from Watford on loan. And uh, in fact, I'm going to do that on the hour here. Horgan off, Kalen Hines on. Kalen, show me something. Show me why we brought you in. And as we approach 70 minutes here, I'm going to bring on uh, Dadasov here as the uh, pressing forward. We haven't seen anything in this second half and Doidge was starting to struggle. So uh, yeah, we are into the last 10 minutes here or we're getting there. And Cali come forward here, but we intercept and take it, and we can break away here with Curtis Jones. Now, he's got Nkuku to his left if he chooses to use him. He does, and Nkuku now. I thought he'd almost lost it there, but he kept it. Now Malin goes back to Garcia. Garcia going to go back to Jackson, and out wide now we go to Nkuku. And Nkuku on this side, can he get the ball in? And Dadasov goes close. 
almost a debut goal or a competitive debut goal because he played in the two uh, sort of winter break friendlies if you will uh, but no goals for any of the new signings in there and Cuckoo now finds Malin in the middle of the park and Garcia lovely ball out to Curtis Jones now Curtis Jones can he get a ball into the box he can towards Hines at the back post and Kalen Hines scores on his debut fantastic and if you can look at the stats here 37 shots 12 on target 16 off target um, but we worked that quite nicely. Wonderful ball out from Garcia. That's what he offers you in there as a ball playing defender. Jones just sort of scoops it into the box, if you will. And Hines, that's a wonderful finish on the volley. 2 0, and that should be game over. Uh, I'm going to praise the boys. It's been a good performance. I'm going to make a final change as well. Oh, there was another sign in or another player that left. Slivka went on loan to the French League 2. I think he went to US Orleans, is it? I totally forgot about that, but I was just looking there where Slivka was to bring, to actually bring him on because I played him in some of the cup games. Yeah, well done, Sam. That's that's brilliant from you. So sorry about that. Yeah, Slivka went to France on loan um, <laughs> till the end of the season, get some game time. And as time ticks away and the game finishes, it's a 2-0 victory. Very, very comfortable for us. And this is, you know, this is why I needed the likes of Horgan and Hines to come in just to give us something fresh off the bench when we needed to take chances. Uh, and we've done that. So 2-0 win, routine for us, and we're in to the Scottish Cup fifth round. And who we will get, I'll show you in just a second. The next game will be Hamilton away. Uh, Hines scores on his debut. D delighted with that. Well done to him. Now, ideally, in the Scottish Cup, I would like us to avoid Celtic and Rangers until the very end, if we can. I know you've got to, if you're going to go on and win it, you know, you've got to play the better side. But if we could just play them slightly later in the competition. Here we go, then. I'm going to do the automatic draw for the Scottish Cup fifth round. Morton will play Air or Hamilton. There's still some big names in this. Dunfermline will play... Our broth or Clyde, and as we tick down, Celtic or Dundee will play Dundee United. Big games if Dundee get through. Rangers will play Hibernian. Of course we will. Yeah, fantastic. So we go to Ibrox then in the Scottish Cup. Why did I have to say anything about getting Celtic and Rangers in the Cup? Of all, there was two. There was two teams there that I didn't want, and I got one of them. Incredible. Okay, so here we are. Hamilton away is our next game, and a couple of changes for us. Marciano comes back in. In place of Dubrovsky, Marciano, uh, he is fit to play this game. And Stevenson comes in for Nkuku, who is suspended for this game. So Marciano, Gray, Jackson and Garcia continue as our two central defenders. Porteous, who has played relatively well this season for us. Um, I think he'll be disappointed that he's now sort of a backup option. But Stevenson left back, Doherty and Malin in the middle. Horgan one side, Jones the other, Cowie behind Doidge. And uh, yeah, this is one of those games that in the earlier, well, off video, we were struggling to come through. This would be one of them where we would draw. So hopefully today we can come away with three points. We are expected to win this game and I am expecting us to win as well. Expect you to pick up where we left off. I assertively say I've got faith in them to make a difference. They all love that. Let's get after this and let's get three points. Now we're in our changed purple kits for today. Pink or purple, whichever one you fancy. I think it's more purple. A Stevie Malin with a free kick early goes close. And uh, yeah, if we can get an early goal or a goal in the first half, just settle everybody down because I feel like the longer the games go on, especially when they're nil-nil, you can get a sort of feeling from the players that they're like, you know, we're struggling here. We need to we need to step it up a bit. 20 minutes in, 25 minutes in, we've had that one chance or one shot from Stevie Malin. The boys are not playing forward. In forward positions, they're not playing great at the moment. We may need to change it up as Celtic take the lead against Aberdeen. Now Malin throws it in. Garcia gets up. Doherty, that's a big chance. That's a big chance. And those are the chances that we're missing as Celtic racing into a 3-0 lead here against Aberdeen. And Adam Jackson comes across to this right back position to pick up the ball and finds Daryl Horgan. This highlight is continuing here as Horgan gets down the line. Can he cut it back to Doidge? That should be a goal. That should be a goal, Christian. If you want to stay here next season, and I don't bring in, well, I've already brought in one striker, but if you want to stay as my start in number nine, you've got to be burying them. As we lose the ball here to Miller, Stevenson lost it, and Miller continuing to run. Miller has run the length of the pitch, and Marciano makes a good save. Can somebody close him down, maybe, if you want to go over and see him? From the resulting corner, then Miller, ball in, Jackson heads clear, and can we counter? Is there another chance here? Horgan, nobody's going to stop you, Horgan. Keep going, keep going. And Martin stops. <laughs> Again, as half time comes to an end, no goals, nil, nil at half time. Aggressively say, I'm far from pleased now. But we do have options on the bench should we need them. And I feel like very soon we may have to make our first change. I'm going to go attacking. I've been doing this a couple of times. And here we are now. Davy Gray 
Finds Stevie Mallon. Davy Gray again. Ball into the box. Curtis Jones at the back post. It comes to Stevenson. Stevenson finds Stevie Mallon. And back out to Curtis Jones and Stevenson. We're working this well around the edge of the box here. Can we get a, a telling ball into the box? Stevenson now. It hits the defender. Back to Eric Garcia. And now Mallon. Over the top towards Horgan. That is a nothing ball from Stevie Mallon. It's not like him as they go back to the goalkeeper and they play it out very, very nicely here. Launches it forward. Jackson wins the header. Easton gets onto it, and Hamilton now, maybe this chance is for them. And a ball through the Miller. Ball through to Miller. Miller with a good... Ah, I couldn't even talk. But what's happened is the ball's gone through the middle. Miller hits a shot. Marciano saves. And it falls to Adam Ida, who scores his first goal of the season. Of course he does. And I was so perplexed with what the hell was going on that I couldn't talk and we're 1-0 down having had the entirety of the game and this is the, like these are the games that we should be winning I'm going to make all three changes here this is going to be bold Dadasov is coming on as a pressing forward uh, I'm bringing Cowie off Curtis Jones can go at centre attacking midfield and I'm bringing Josan on on this side this is what's happened this is what kept happening off video we just we're just not good enough. And I thought that with the squad that we had put together, you know, with the, the lone players that we brought in, that we may, it may change our fortunes round, but at the moment, it really hasn't. And Curtis Jones now finds Daryl Horgan. Horgan can hit those and it goes wide and we're never going to win a league. We're going to be 10 points behind Celtic if we don't get something out of this game. And these are the games that have been frustrating me since the start of, uh, since, the, since, the, since I last left you. Stevenson now gives the ball away to Ida. And Marciano makes a good save. And Stevenson, if Nkuku doesn't play, I don't, I can't rely on Stevenson. Like, I don't know why. And uh, with seven minutes to go here, it's going to be another tale of just not good enough, unfortunately. Uh, I mean, look at that ball in from Halberg. You know, that, it just really shows that when we're down and up against it, you know, we're just not good enough. But maybe another chance for us to get level and another draw be our 10th draw of the season. And there is a little bit of frustration in my voice because I know what we, how we can play. And the way that we can play when we're doing well is, you know, we can beat anyone. We beat Celtic at the start of the year as Ida pulls another good save. And they've had four clear-cut chances. We've had one. We've only had four shots on target the whole game. And we're going to fade here to a 1-0 loss to Hamilton. And honestly, as our second loss of the season, I am very, very disappointed with that. Um, so yeah, 22 games played, 11 wins, 9 draws. That's only our second loss of the season. And it's just a massive kick in the teeth. In terms of the league, it puts us 10 behind Celtic and 4 behind Rangers. Uh, we do have a 5-point gap to Kilmarnock. Yeah, Hibernian lose after 19 games undefeated. It's um, it's a kick in the teeth, like I keep saying. Uh, it's very frustrating. So that's our first loss in 19 games. Um, so maybe the loan signings, they didn't really help. They helped in the, the Cali game. But again, we go back to SPL action and uh, yeah, we just come unstuck. Uh, but that is where I'm going to end the video. I'm sorry that I've got a little bit more disappointed towards the end of the video there. I, I just I felt like the signings that we made give us more strength and depth but again it's a, it's the tale of football and it's always been the same you miss chances you get punished and uh, it's exactly what's happened again for us today and in terms of our SPL form look at this in the in the Sladbrokes Premiership the last one two three four five six seven sort of eight games we've had two wins five draws and one loss and in terms of pushing to take down Celtic and Rangers that is not good enough we need to figure out a way of turning these draws into wins and winning games where we should be winning comfortably um, but that is where I'm going to end this video uh, thank you very very much for watching I do appreciate it I'm sorry like I said I've got a little bit more frustrated but this is the the uh, the ups and downs of football manager shall we say so uh, if you've enjoyed today's video and you think that uh, you know the signings are going to be decent although we've not shown their best today uh, moving forward i think we've got a decent squad where we can hopefully finish third and then for next season push on again because i think that's probably where we're at right now and the next time we will meet then will be the game against rangers at ibrox in the scottish cup i feel like that'll be a good a good game for us to come back to we'll play rangers away from home and then we'll play st johnson at home we'll kick on another four matches as we look towards the uh, the split if you will in april uh, um, yeah, thank you very, very much for watching. I hope you do. You have enjoyed it. If you have, please do not leave without leaving a like. I appreciate all the uh, support, the new subscribers, the uh, the likes and the comments on the videos. I really do appreciate it. So yeah, leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you happen to be new. And until next time, guys, thank you very, very much for watching. I do appreciate it. See you later.